Hello and thank you for joining us on Newsweek, where we highlight some of the biggest stories that made the headlines recently. I am Jacinta Agochuku. This week, Goswe Wabio and uh, Tajuddin Abbas emerged as the prominent leaders of the highly anticipated 10th National Assembly, taking charge of the two key positions that will shape the future direction of the nation. Also this week, President Bola Tunubu took the decision to suspend Abdurashid Bauer, the chairman of the Economic Financial Crimes Commission, for alleged abuse of office. Later on the show, Central Bank of Nigeria announces a series of charges to the forex market with the primary aim of stream, uh, streamlining and enhancing the efficiency of foreign exchange operations within the country. All the details in a moment. Stay with us. Well, we begin with the emergence of Goswe Babio and to the agenda bars. There is the leaders of the Senate and House of Representatives, respectively. Babio defeated his only rival, Abraziz Yari, by 63 to 45 votes, while a senator-elect abstained. And Abbas garnered 352 votes to edge out his two rivals, who put three votes as pits. Speaking after his emergence, Ababio said the Senate under his watch would focus on key priority areas, which include oversight, infrastructure, economy, security, and good working relationship with the executive. The new Speaker of the House of Representatives, Abbas, has promised that the third House under his leadership would champion legislations to diversify the economy, promote entrepreneurship, tackle insecurity and create employment opportunities for years. With the emergence of Apobio and Abaru, the new badges is expected to shift to the composition of the principal offices of the Senate. Well, I have uh, a gentleman in the studio joining me to discuss this. this is Joe Ibukwe, a politician. Welcome to the show, sir. Thanks for having me. Good All right, uh, let's get on with the questions. How would you describe the race for the leadership of the third national assembly well you know we had a history mm. in 215 after the elections in 215 election the epc won we didn't bother to play the politics of the national assembly and it cost us almost four years because we all went to sleep and a member, a senator elect, went and connived with the opposition that we just defeated after 16 years and brought them in. And we suffered for that four years, 2015 to 2019. The president was almost, you know, a whole hostage was frustrated. They used they used they used the opposition to whittle down what the government, Lord Government would have achieved. Mm. This time we said no. We started screaming from day one. And we said the president must not go to bed. And we all saw the politics. We saw the movements. We saw the consultations. We saw all the dialogues, meetings upon meetings, midnight meetings. Because you don't go to bed when the leadership of the National Assembly is being, you know, formed. And we had the result. Look at the margin. Mm. If anybody had told me that Yari will get 44, 43 votes, I wouldn't have believed it. 44. 66, 44. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't have believed it. What if we did not put those gravitas? What if we, don't, we did not move as fast as possible? What if we did not go to build the bridges and, get, and consult heavily? We would have seen something else. But thank God, Hachuaju is in the saddle. You don't go to sleep when the enemies are at the door. 
Okay. So we salute the courage of our leaders for standing up to make sure that what happened, the tragedy that we saw in 215 did not manifest again. That is the work of men. The men went to work, and where we are today. We thank God for that. All right, uh, Mr. Ibukwe, you will agree with me that the country is going through a lot of issues, but what would you say, the new leadership of the National Assembly, what is this first thing they should start up with? Well, the National Assembly is to make laws. Laws that will make, the, that's their function, laws that will make the system to work. A kind of police, policing the system. Make sure that money goes where it should go to. You know, because they came from constituencies. 109 senators who want something to happen in their constituency. The same thing at 3, is it not 369 or 359? House of House of members. They want to have projects in their area. So that's the work. That's the work. So, he needs that cooperation to be able to... He didn't know what happened when Buhari was there. 2015 to 2019 was, a, was, was almost war. They couldn't pass. You, you push a budget to be passed, they would the plane with it. So then demanding money. So then demanding something else just to frustrate the president so that he would not perform. It's one of the strategies to... If you are not careful, they will deny you your second term. And they tried it. But it did not work. Because light and darkness have no meeting point. So, so we also saw a lot of people who indicated interest to run for this race. Mm -hmm. But do you at any point feel that this would have um, divided the house? If you didn't go to work? Yeah. Yes. A lot of things went to ground that you, on the ground that you may not see. Mm. A lot of the night became afternoon. You don't go to sleep. You have to do that. Is the real politics? Politics of getting your man you can trust to be in the saddle. Otherwise, your four years will be circumvented and decimated. That is, we call it horse trading, political horse trading. Consultations, meeting the right people, making the right connections, getting the right people to come, to work with. It is important that you do that. Otherwise, you'll just be floating. There are so many corruption engineers. We call them corruption engineers in the system. They don't do anything. They don't have a job. Is to find a way to create a loophole to steal from the system. Somebody's talking about it. There are so many things in the system that actually we need to change. And that's why he, need, he needs this man, this National Assembly leadership, to be able to, to break the vicious circle of the can canker worm, canker worms and caterpillars that have been eating the, the, the nation, you know, dry. So you, do you agree the house is in order after? Of course. Uh, didn't you see, are you going to? Check the hands of the of the winner. It was the a close contest. Mm. I never believed that Nigeria would get up to 20 votes, I told you. When I saw 43, 44, I screamed. What if we did not go to work? What if we went into the National Assembly leadership elections just like that? Ha. Ah, you think we'd have gone to the opposition? But thank God. I told you understands the game very well. We know him. We saw the movements, we saw the consultations, and we are, we, we are satisfied that something is going to work out. It's going to work out. So work with the master, and you get what you want. I agree so, with you, uh, yeah. Mr. Joey Bukwe. We all are anticipating more from the new leadership of uh, Bola Tinubun as well, the National Assembly. Uh, thank you so much for your contribution so far. But right now, let's take a short break and news week continues in a moment. Stay with us.
Thank you for joining us. Uh, and in case you're just uh, joining us, it's Newsweek where we highlight some of the biggest stories that made the headlines recently. Now, President Bola Tunubu suspended the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Abdul Rashid Bawa, from office. The indefinite suspension was announced on Wednesday night by the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. Bauer's suspension was to allow for proper investigation into his conduct while in office. It will be recalled that leadership succession at the EFCC since its inception in 2003 has always been embroiled in controversies. In 2021, Bauer took over the Hermes of Affairs at the Commission under similar circumstances when his predecessor, Ibrahim Magu, were suspended from office by then President Muhammad Buhari over allegations of corruption. Bauer is now the second major appointee of former President Muhammad Buhari to be suspended by Tinubu. To discuss this, I still have Joey Bukwe, a politician in the studio. Mr. Joey Bukwe, let me come to you. What was your first reaction when you heard that Bauer has been uh, suspended indefinitely? It's not the first person. The central bank governor is also in the same. Yes. Did you see it coming, boat. though? Well, I saw it coming. Oh. I saw it coming. We are politicians. We read meanings. We think ahead of time. You see, when I saw the monetary policy, let me deal with it, uh, because it's the same thing. I will still come back to Bauer. When we saw the monetary policy, in the heat of the elections, we know that it's a ploy. And I told you it's the target. I raised an alarm. I raised an alarm. And I went to a particular bank where I live in Surrey, and in front of that bank, I think it was Zeni Bank, and I said, what is happening? A few weeks to the election, you don't want to deny people money. It takes three things to win elections. First is money, second is money, third is money. Okay. Yes. I read it from, from a book, you know, and I've forgotten the author, in America. Because of logistics, movements. Do you know what it takes to print the ballot papers? And to produce ballot boxes, to transport them, to house them? It, provision is made. And it's budgeted for elections. Election materials and mobilization. To mobilize people, you can't bring some people to come and line up for a whole day. And you can't give them Fanta or Coke to drink. It's allowed. Some people think it's just. You want to bring a new leadership. You have to spend money. You have to spend time. You have to spend energy. They denied us money. They denied us petrol. PMS, that we have, we never suffered for it in four years. Four years, you know. In eight, not four years, in eight years of Buhari, Buhari's government, we never suffered for a crisis. In the peak of the elections, he came. He didn't tell you anything. It was a plan. And it was targeted. Actually, it was the target. Take money away. Increase the, the price of fuel. Pretend as if there is fuel scarcity or something happened. Then you know that you have had Nigerians in their neck. So, so the, the Bauer's case is, people are saying, is, is long overdue. Well, no, I'm coming to Bauer's case. Bauer's case. That's what I said. There are too many corruption engineers in the system. When that young man came, I said, this man is too young for this job. Oh. He's too, he's a baby for this job. That job is not for the boys. Wow. And his age played on him. When I saw him the first time, I, because I, if you know what that office is, you can't put a baby there. A baby cannot drive a car. His, his, his right leg cannot get to the pedal. He can't change the gear. The hand is, is too short. That's what I saw. 
You know, we've been a veteran in this game for too long. I was the publicity secretary of our party here in Lagos for almost 15 years. So we know it was, it was all, all these things, you know, we, we, we just left them. But it caused a colossal damage, debilitating damage in the system. And let's also um, talk about Mago's case. You know, before Bauer was Mago, and the outcome of that case has not been seen to now. And people, and now this. people are actually raising concerns that this might go the same way uh, that of Mago's. Not on that, you are you. Okay. <laughs> he has a deep history. Absolutely. Absolutely, as a cop. You know. Well, is the fifth governor I served in Lagos, yeah. So we know every, each and every one of them. I first I served on that body, so we know each other very well. It's a bean counter. A bean counter is a brilliant chartered accountant who understands figures. Mm. He's going to get to the root of the matter. You see the Egyptians we saw yesterday, we will see no more. Let, let's also you wait and see. You will see it. So it you will agree with me that some of the President Tonobo's decisions so far ha have greeted a lot of uh, different views. Uh, positive or negative? Both positive, both negative. But I just want you to score him. Okay. His moves so far. What can you score <laughs> The him? corruption engineers uh, in Abuja is the wrong. Ah, we have brought someone that will kill our businesses. So <laughs> they don't have anything. They just wear the armor and suits and be going around corridors of power. We need to chase them away from Abuja so that we can have peace. They won't find a com they won't be comfortable with Achiwaju. So corruption engineers, that's, that's what we call them. I'll cite an example. If you have made an MD of a corporation, you go there and sit down. The corruption engineers will go and work on the papers and take your power and go and give it to their one of their one of their front frontliners there. You will just stay there. And be taking your taking your money and taking everything you have to even know. That's what they do in Abuja there. It won't happen. Mm. The man that is sitting in the circle is a shadow accountant too. He knows everything though. So leave them. They will leave Abuja by force. Corruption engineers, they will leave Abuja by force. We are coming. They will leave Abuja by force. And then we'll get this money and we'll use it to work for the people. How can people stay in Abuja? They don't have jobs, they don't have anything. They live in a mansion. They have 50, 50 vehicles in their compound. They are corruption engineers. They cannot work. We we'll deal with them. We we'll go to EFCC and rework it. We we'll go to all these institutions, you know, bank, oil, industry, the CBN, the bank. We we'll actually we'll rework them. He's a financial guru. Mm -hmm. Chartered accountant. No, American ch trained chartered accountant. He knows what to do. He has been in the system, so he knows where the loopholes are. He's going to block it. Right. That's why they don't want him to come home. All right, Jerry. Huh. Well, let's move to our final story for tonight. Uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria has announced the unification of all segments of the Nigerian forex market. The APS Bank announced that collapse of all windows into the investors and exporters window. This move is part of Nigerian government effort to improve liquidity and stability in the market and attract foreign investors into the Nigerian economy. According to the press statement signed by Director of Financial Markets, Angela Sere Ejimbi, the bank abolished the segmentation of the FX market into different windows. The CBN also announced in reintroducing the wooden buyer and wooden seller model at the IE window. This model allows eligible uh, transactions to access foreign exchange based on the guidelines outlined in the circular dated 21st April 2017. And to discuss this, I still ha I have, okay, uh, a gentleman joining me via Zoom, Mayo Dili a polit uh, policy analyst. Mr. Mayo Dili, Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, how do you perceive the impact of this development on addressing market malpractice uh, and elevated the long-standing challenge of a fragmented exchange rate in the country? Uh, I, I mean, this is what every um, sensible economist have been calling for 
um, in the last seven years at the very least. Um, you know, the idea that people were making trillions, uh, billions, and multiple of millions of naira um, by doing absolutely nothing but gaming the system, um, using the window between um, the official rates and the market rates um, to become essentially rich just by having access to free dollars, um, you know, was one that angered a lot of well-meaning Nigerians. And, you know, thankfully, that um that um is it christmas period i'm going to call it now you know has completely ended but the most important thing is not just stopping the rent seeking opportunities that that window created um the most important thing you know is the fact that it creates a stable environment for international investors for foreign direct investments to flow in um, and for there to be some sort of stability and predictability in our business environment generally and that's why you've seen that our bonds you know have responded positively that our markets also um, have also surged um, and that's why you see all the positive signals especially coming from the international community um, because, you know, it signals very simply that Nigeria is open for business and that we're a serious country um, and, and that we're ready to do business uh, with international investors. That for me is the most important thing um, or the most important output from that decision that was made. In fact, many of the Forex that have been trapped in the country for so long, and you recall that a lot of airlines, you know, um, you know, have been crying to the roof, you know, that they can't repatriate their Forex. Um, by this decision, I'm sure in the next couple of months, um, you know, many of these trapped funds, you know, would find their ways, you know, back into the system, you know, and this also would inspire confidence in these businesses um, to continue to operate within our geographical space and perhaps even to push prices downwards. Because the truth is, the fact that the mere fact that they could not access Forex, you know, made them price things like airline tickets, mm. you know, at ridiculous rates. And I'm sure that once this is settled, you know, after a period of time, we're likely to see prices in those domains begin to go down steadily. All right. I also would like to find out from you, with the implementation of a unified exchange rate, how likely is it for certain individuals to hinder the process in the pursuit of a free market, considering our focus on transparency and liquidity? I mean, the truth is there is nothing to, um, there's nothing to hinder. I listened to you carefully in your introduction, you know, where you said, um, you know, people can freely trade this Forex um, through the I and E window. So there's no, there's no, there's no way you can game this system now because everything now is likely to be determined by market forces, right? Mm -hmm. So the more we improve on our fiscal strategy and our fiscal policy as a country, mm -hmm. the more we get other macroeconomic factors um, right, the moment we get other economic decisions right, whether it's on the micro or the macro level, and our currency continues to strengthen um, against the dollar, uh, you're likely to see the prices also fall considerably. I think today it traded at about 700 naira to a dollar, um, the last time I saw it. Um, you know, But it's likely to go lower in the next couple of months, depending on the fiscal decisions that we take as a country. right? So it's, it's not something that people can gain. Um, it's, it's not something that people can relatively control. Um, it's the CBN that actually has the prerogative um, to do such kinds of monetary controls. And this time it's allowed, it's created an environment, you know, you know, for banks to freely trade, you know, this, this, um, this Forex. And so we're not likely to go back to the kind of regime that we saw in the last, you know, right. seven years. All right. Uh, Ayo Daily Adieu, I'm so sorry, we're out of time. Thank you for your contribution so far. All right, let me just have your final take on this topic. The, with the, uh, the removal of first subsidy and now there's their the expectation that there will be pressure, pricing, high pricing pressure and all of that. How do you think we can navigate this? Wait. Atuwaju is here. And he's going to address this matter. We are, we have been helping some West African countries, you know, to grow. Somebody went to a border overnight 
and counted about um, about 300 trucks one night going to that side. So those small small countries, you know, very close to us, are feeding on us. Are feeding on us. Now that they have removed the subsidy, go and check. They tell us they tell us that we consume how many. Uh, <laughs> Uh, how many barrels of, of petroleum pro, pro products? I mean, the, 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 the liters, billions of billions of liters we, co we, we consume on a daily basis. Go and check now. Corruption engineers at work. Mm. They magnify these things, and you pay subsidies. It enters their pocket. No more business as usual. No more business. No more business as so usual. We we'll get, we we'll receive common sense. Even though common sense is not common. All right. No more business it takes as usual. a man who understands the, the, the dynamics or the economics to deal with this matter. You will see that all these things they magnify that we consume on a daily basis is a, it's a, it's just a fiction. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Actually, we get the right, what we consume here every day. And if God help us and then go to, then go to the families, you know, work. And the modular refineries work, we we'll have enough. Yeah, and the price will go down. That's where we are. All right, a good place to leave it. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I've been speaking mm -hmm. with a politician, Joey Bukwe, here in the studio. I had uh, Ayodhili Adio join me via Zoom. Thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you for having me. And as well, thank you for being part of the show. And that's our show for today. Remember, you can follow the conversation on our social media platforms at TVC News NG and on our website at TVCnews.tv. I am Jacinta Agochuku. Until next week, it's goodbye. Yeah.